everyone welcome back to my channel and another tutorial today we're going to sew along together the tumbleweed toiletries tote by blue calla patterns i tell you i just love this pattern i'm normally not one that's a fan of train cases normally the train cases will have binding inside and it's really hard to get into those tight spaces this one has no binding it's awesome um well there's one place for binding, but it's not your typical binding. I'll show you where the binding is here. Um, first, let me show you some of the features of this bag. So you can see it's a decent sized toiletries bag. It's got double zip train case closure here. So let me open that up for you and show you. So as you can see, no binding in the train case. The only binding used is actually right along this mesh pocket here. So it's not your typical binding is really more just fabric and an accent piece for your mesh pocket here see that's a really decent size <clears throat> and let me open the top here now it has a frame in it so when you open it up it opens up really big and square so there's 90 degree angle frames in here from emmeline bags I did mine in a waterproof canvas. You can see how much space there is in there. It's like the perfect toiletries bag and it really wasn't too hard to make at all. The hardest part I found was, of course, the train case, but trust me, it's one of the more simpler train cases I have ever made. Um, it's got kind of a faux rolled handle here. Um, yeah. I just love it. This will be going on my next trip with me. This one is definitely mine. Materials used in this bag, this kind of, I don't know if you can see the iridescency of this swirl vinyl. It was a uh, pre-order from Galaxy Customs. I also used Galaxy Customs uh, black dice glitter vinyl for the bottom accent and the handles. Uh, my zippers and zipper pulls were from Blue Cala. Um, my rivets frame, and the zipper ends were from Emmeline bags. Um, there is foam in just the train case of this, and that is the so I use the Pretty in Pink sew foam from Galaxy Customs, and the top is fleece, uh, fusible fleece, which I got from Emmeline bags. Uh, what else to say about this bag? I don't know. I will be making a few of these put on my market table. I tell you, I I really like them. It it isn't. Uh, it's, it's not a super long sew. You can get one done in less than a day, I am sure. Minimal pieces to cut. It was just absolutely amazing. So, enough talk about this bag. How about we get to making it, and I'll see you guys on the other side. All right, so you're going to need some rivets. Number five zipper tape. Some binding, or you can make your own. Two zipper ends. Five number five zipper pulls, a 90 degree frame, your two back pieces. I have my train case pieces backed with the sewing foam. You're going to need two aligning uh, train case bottom pieces backed with fleece, one without, and then your exterior piece as well, backed with foam your train case top, your exterior pieces backed with fleece, and your two lining pieces. I'm using waterproof canvas. If you're using cotton, make sure you back them with a woven interfacing. Your train case gusset piece, I have my exterior backed with foam and my lining piece. My two handle pieces, my mesh pocket pieces, and last but not least, four zipper tabs. All right, so what we want to do first is take this uh, train case gusset piece and find the centers of both the top and the bottom sides on both the lining and the exterior pieces. Uh, to make your foam, if you're on a domestic machine, condense more and you have a zigzag stitch or a serger, you can uh, go ahead and that'll help compress the foam if you baste it on that way. Okay, so I have already put my two zipper pulls onto my train case uh, zipper and I kind of pulled them out of the way, securing them with a clip so they don't pull off. Now I'm going to use double-sided tape. If your machine does not like double-sided tape, please use clips. So I have my lining piece face up, my zipper face up, 
and I am going to stick my um, zipper onto my lining piece. Now you'll see my zipper is slightly longer than this lining piece and that is so I can have my zipper pulls pulled out of the way so they don't get in the way of my stitching and I won't have to move them back and forth as I am attaching this zipper. Okay, then you're gonna take your exterior piece. Again, use clips if your machine can't handle the tape. I'm putting double-sided tape along one of the long edges. And then I'm gonna take this and put this right sides together with that zipper and lining piece, making sure the lining and exterior pieces match up nicely. So what this has done is sandwich our zipper tape in between our lining and our exterior piece. Then we're gonna go ahead and sew across here. Now I'm gonna go and put on my uh, right sided zipper foot. This will make things go nice and close to our zipper to prevent us getting a wavy zipper. And I'm gonna go down here with a 3 8 of inch seam allowance. Now what we want to do is we want to pull our pieces uh, right sides or wrong sides together away from that zipper tape. I like to use double sided tape within that seam just to help hold it in place because I cannot press this really well as I'm using vinyl. Again, only use this double sided tape if your machine can handle it. Otherwise, give it a really good press with the iron if you're using materials that can be ironed or a really, really good finger press. So I'm pulling my lining pieces nice and taut away from that zipper. I'm gonna do the same with my exterior piece. Bringing those two wrong sides together. Because my vinyl is so thick with that foam and everything, I am just going to use a couple wonder clips to help hold that in place as well, just so I know it's not shifting. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and top stitch along that seam. So this is what that looks like. Now we want to take the lining back piece and we want to put it right sides together with that lining train case gusset piece. So you're not clipping this to the exterior piece at all, just the lining piece. And we're going to sew up here as close as we can to that seam with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, making sure we are not catching that exterior piece into this. Okay, so this is what that looks like. See, we've only gone that far. 
you're going to do the exact same thing with the exterior back piece making sure you're not catching that lining piece within that stitching as well So just kind of folding it up and out of the way, the lining piece, and only doing the exterior pieces. Not quite to the top, you just, just below where our seam ends. So this is what we have here. And now we want to just sew through the zipper tape through all layers just to that line that we had on the other one. So this is keeping the bottom of these pieces open because we aren't binding this. We want to be able to sew them separate from one another, but we do want them attached at this very top part by the zipper. Okay, so that is done. You can see our bottoms are free and our tops are all attached together. Now we want to fold it this way, top stitch along here, but make sure the lining is pointing towards the zipper tape. So we're only sewing through the exterior at this point. Just over the zipper. You're not going all the way down the bottom. You're just going over the zipper at that point, then pulling the lining out of the way and then top stitching the rest of the way through. So once you're past that zipper, you wanna make sure the lining is completely out of the way so you are only going over that zipper piece or that bottom piece, yes, like so. And see how this is still free? You wanna do the exact same thing with the other side, attaching the exterior and the lining pieces in the exact same fashion. It's a little bit more awkward because we are working in a loop, but it's completely doable. Just take your time. So again, first we're just clipping the lining pieces together. That's done. And now we are, are going to sew those together right here. Again, only going to just below where the zipper is at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. This is the hardest part of making this bag, I promise you, and it's really not that hard. It's more awkward having to fold those pieces out of the way, but so worth it, trust me. So you kind of got to squish her all together so you can bring those two short ends together to do the other side of that back piece. You see me struggle with it a little bit, <laughs> but we figure it out. So you kind of get the squished mess, but it all works out. And then once again, you're going to sew this from the bottom edge of those two pieces up to just not quite to where the zipper, uh, bottom of the zipper tape is. Okay, so now you want to pull these down like so. Now I did make a mistake here. Oh, not quite yet. I make a mistake in a little bit. <laughs> now we just want to connect those lines, sewing through both layers, the lining and the exterior, through the zipper teeth for that last inch or so that's left unsewn. So again, this is leaving the bottom of these panels free, but keeping where the zipper tape is connected. Okay, so now you want to turn these out like so, so they are wrong sides together. Then we want to do our top stitching here. So this is where I did it wrong. I went and top stitched this very top part without pulling my lining out of the way. So make sure you have the lining going more towards the uh, the zipper tape when you go to top stitch through uh, the main part of this once you get past the zipper. I accidentally, once I got past this first part here, I did not fold my lining piece too far out of the way here. So it made it a little bit hard for me, 
but I ended up going back and fixing it later. So just make sure you pull that before you go do this bottom part of this top stitching that you have your lining piece pulled out of the way. I ended up having to pull stitches and redo it. You can't really see me making the mistake here, but I like to just show, tell you guys where I struggled and where I made a mistake. So I've already gone ahead and fixed that, as you can see. Now you wanna leave this opening in the top of the, or sorry, in the back, that's what we want. Now what we wanna do is we wanna transfer all of our center marks that we made onto the zipper tape up here. So I'm just doing it on the back side with my Tandy leather pen. And you also want to do it for the quarter marks on the other side as well. So now that we have all of our centers matched, again, I forgot to match. These are my quarter marks. I did not do it on my back pieces here. So I'm just matching up my seam allowances and finding the centers there. And then I will have all four of my quarter marks marked. Of course, doing the same with the lining pieces as well. Okay, so now you want to pull these away from each other like this. So we have our lining pieces going one direction and our exterior pieces going the other. And this is me doing my other side quarter marks on the other side, matching up my two centers that I already snipped and finding my centers along the other sides. Having these quarter marks really helps when you're going to attach an oval bottom. So on our uh, exterior bottom, I'm marking my, I'm just copying my center marks here. I also am going to go ahead and make my snips. I prefer snips because they don't wash away and I can see them no matter what. Just make sure they're within the seam allowance. And then you also want to go ahead and find the centers of the long sides by folding it in half in the other direction. Okay, so now we can put this onto the exterior side of our train case. So you're going to go ahead and match up those quarter marks that we just made. So I like to put three or four clips into one side, go over to the other side, do the same thing, match up my four marks, my four sections first, and then after that, ease the fabric in between all of those clips. So you see here, my gusset doesn't quite want to go around that bottom, so I'm just going to put a few small snips into just the gusset piece, not the bottom piece. And what this is going to do is help spread that fabric around that curve to make them the same size, turning a straight piece into a round piece pretty much is what we're doing. You can see now that that is going to go around good. All right, so now that we have that clipped all the way around, we're gonna go ahead and sew this together with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. You can see I use a ton of clips. Some people, when they do rounded bottoms, like to use staples. I myself don't like pulling staples out later. Um, I have pretty bad carpal tunnel, so it's kind of hard to pull those staples out after the fact. So I just use a gazillion uh, clips to make sure nothing shifts, and that works for me. Another helpful tip for doing around bottoms is you can also hand baste it if you don't mind hand basting. I've done that on a few bags and it has helped a lot.
take this nice and slow because you want to have a really really nice shape to the bottom of your bag the lining pieces not as important I guess if you're a little bit off but this exterior piece will definitely show if you have um, an uneven um, stitching Okay, so that is done and I'm just checking my seams there kind of from the inside making sure we're good and now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and attach on the lining piece that doesn't have the fleece and with a half inch seam allowance and then once that's done you can go ahead and you can turn that through I also forgot to mention that I did trim down my exterior seam allowance to about a quarter of an inch or so seam allowance so go ahead and turn that through that opening in the back panel of that gusset piece. Take your time to make sure everything is pressed flat. Um, it's taking me a little longer here as I did use glitter vinyl, which tends to stick to each other, but man, does it ever look nice once done. So it's definitely worth the little bit of an extra hassle to use the glitter vinyl for sure. So the reason we did a half inch seam allowance for attaching the lining is just to make it so that lining is slightly smaller than the exterior so you have a little bit more of a form fitted um, fit on the inside of this train case. All right, so that is done. So what I did was I reached in through that back opening and installed my nameplate as well. Once that nameplate is installed, uh, you can go ahead and baste that opening shut. Look how pretty the bottom of that looks. Man, I like the glitter vinyl so much. Okay, so now let's prepare that mesh pocket for in the train case. Again, I am going to use double-sided tape. You can use clips here as well. I just used pre-made binding because I had some uh, leftover in my stash, which was perfect for using up some binding scraps. You can also make your own. These do not need to be cut on the bias as they're just pretty much uh, covering the ends of the mesh pocket and helping us put it onto zipper tape. So I'm taking my mesh pocket. I've just stuck some double-sided tape in the halfway mark of this bias tape and I'm sticking this into the center. So what we have is we have our bias tape double folded. So the long edges are folded into the center and then folded in half again. So it has no raw edges. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take some clips once I have that stuck down to fold down the other side of the bias tape to match the back side. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same with the other piece. So now along where that bottom fold was, I'm going 1 8 of an inch seam allowance top stitch. So again, we're just doing it along the bottom fold of our bias tape right where it is kind of meeting up with the mesh. So you can see here that is done. And now we are going to prepare our zipper tape. I'm going to take my two zipper tabs here. Put them right sides together, sandwiching that zipper tape on both ends. And so across here with a half inch seam allowance. 
Now that that's done, I've also gone ahead and top stitched along both of those. And now we're going to attach these to our zipper tape. So once again, I am using double-sided tape. It definitely makes this a lot easier. You can do this with a domestic machine, just making sure that where we're going to be top stitching, which is that top fold of that bias tape, the tape, the double-sided tape will not be interfering with that. So if you put the tape just on the very bottom edges of your zipper tape, you should be fine to use it. So I'm just attaching this to both sides, making sure my zipper is going the right way. Uh, a good way to think about it is the larger piece should be on the bottom with the zipper pull going to the left. So when you're sticking these on, make sure you're putting them on nice and straight so you have a nice straight looking zipper. And then we'll go ahead and we're going to top stitch along here and here to attach that zipper to our mesh pocket. Okay, so now what we want to do is take one of our other lining pieces with the fleece on the bottom. We're going to put this over top of it. Now the mesh is going to be bigger than that piece. That is okay. Uh, we are going to trim this pocket to be the same shape as our uh, lining bottom piece here. So take your time to make sure the mesh pocket is nice and flat against this. And then I'm going to go ahead and just trim up the mesh to get the same shape as that bottom piece. Then we're going to go ahead and baste these together with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Right, so now let's put that aside for now. We're going to work on the upper zipper compartment of our bag. So if you haven't already, go ahead and mark your centers on both pieces. In the pattern, it has you do this at the beginning. I'm terrible when it comes to doing this and I always forget and I end up doing it after the fact, but that's okay too. Okay, so now what we want to do is I've uh, we want to mark where our handle placement is going to be for later. Um, so I just put punched out the little dots that are on the pattern piece to do this. Um, I'm having a little bit of an issue because it's hard to see my marks on the vinyl I'm using. So I ended up going to a darker friction pen. You want to make sure you use something that is not going to wash away. Okay, so once you have those markings done, on both the lining and the exterior pieces along the top edges, we're going to measure in and mark one inch. Okay, 
Okay, and then we're going to attach the zipper again. I am going to use double-sided tape because that is my preferred method. If your machine does not like it, be sure to use clips here. So what we wanna do is on the lining piece right side up between those one inch marks and then the exterior piece, you can use your double-sided tape all the way across. I'm gonna take our zipper. Um, I'm not putting my pulls on yet. I'm going to, on the back side of these, mark an inch line from each end. I use these lines for later for attaching my zipper pull. When you go to attach your zipper pull, you just line up these lines and your pull should go on nice and straight. So once you have those lines, go ahead and pull your zipper tape apart. I have also, you also want to make sure you have the center marked on your lining pieces and a center mark on your zipper tape. I already went ahead and found my center mark on my zipper tape. I'm matching that up with the zipper or the center mark on the lining. Both of these are right sides up. When I get to that one inch mark that we made, I'm going to kind of lean my zipper tape down and out of the way. We do not want the last inch of this to be caught in our seam allowances. So you could go ahead and you can base that right away if you wanted to to hold it in place. Because I'm using zipper tape, I'm gonna do it all in one go. So now I'm taking my exterior piece, putting it right sides together with these, matching up my ends, sandwiching that zipper tape in the middle. Now we'll go ahead and we will sew along here with a quarter of an inch to a three eighths of an inch ish seam allowance. Again, I do have my zipper foot on. It helps have better control of the zipper. When I start, I'm making sure that tail is out of the way of our zipper tape for that first inch. And then we are sewing through all three layers to the next inch mark. And then when you hit that inch mark, make sure, double check that that tail is down and out of the way so it's not getting caught. So I've done that for both of my pieces as you can see here. Now what we wanna do is bring our lining side. We want, actually we want our, <laughs> our seam allowance to be pointing towards the lining side. So I am going to once again use my double-sided tape To fold that out of the way you can use an iron on this if you wanted to or you can go ahead and give it a really good finger press so we did not top stitch this at this point what you want to do now is you have your lining going one way you have your uh, exterior going the other. I'm clipping my zipper tails out of the way because I do not want them to get caught in these side seams we're about to do. We're going to make sure our exteriors are facing the same way and our linings are the same way and we are going to line up the seam right here with clips and then clip just the two short sides of these zipper compartment panels. Again, matching up those seams and ensuring that the seam from where we attached the zipper is facing towards the lining side. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and sew down each of these sides with our 3 8 of inch seam allowance. So now that we have that done, we are going to take our completed train case bottom here. Okay, this 
feels a little awkward at first, but once you get it, <laughs> you get it. So for the exterior train case and the exterior side of the zipper compartment piece, we want to match up the center marks that we had marked on the unsewn side of the train case zipper with the long sides. And then again with the back center piece, just kind of squish it inside here, just making sure they are wrong sides together. And then you'll mark up, match up the quarter section sides as well with the seams we just created. Clip all the way around and then go ahead and sew this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm taking you over to my cylinder arm machine because it's just easier to show you what I am doing here as the bag would be blocking the view of the camera the other way. So if I was on my flatbed, I would actually be sewing this from the inside of the bag rather than the exterior of the bag like I'm doing here. Um, both are equally good. This is just the easier way to do it on a cylinder machine. So go ahead and sew all the way around there with a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so once that is done, just kind of <laughs> undoing your zipper helps a little bit here. So I'm just kind of going through and undoing my zipper. It might have been easier to do that beforehand, but hey, it all worked out. Okay, so this is what we have here. So now we have our quarter sections marked here. I am going to take my uh, mesh pocket piece you want to make sure the larger side of the mesh pocket is pointing towards the back and Then we are going to put these into that same seam that we had just sewn The last one was just the base rather than doing all of the layers at the same time So we will go in with a deeper seam allowance for our final seam so mark up match up your quarter sections again this is going along the unsewn side of the train case zipper tape And then go ahead and evenly distribute all of that fabric in between those quarter sections. Okay, so now again, if I was on my flatbed, I'd be doing it like this, but I am on my cylinder arm. So I'm going to go around this way with a full quarter of an inch seam allowance now. Once again, I do have my zipper foot on my machine.
So now that that is done, just kind of peek in and double check that your zipper looks good. I just kind of pull it away to make sure that it didn't get caught where it shouldn't have been caught and that it's nice and even all the way around. Okay, and then once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and attach the other bottom lining panel. My fleece did not like sticking to that waterproof canvas. Again, marking all four quarter sections, and then you will attach this onto the lining side. The only difference this time is we are going to leave a gap in the bottom of this for turning. So approximately from here to here-ish. So we will not be sewing, sewing in here. This is where we will be pulling that bag through. So definitely make sure your zipper is open at this point. And go ahead and match up those quarter sections and clip it all the way around. And we're doing this with a half inch seam allowance because we want our lining to be slightly smaller than our exterior. So you can see I've done that. I have left this opening in the bottom. I'm trimming my seam allowance down to about a quarter of an inch-ish. Not where the turning hole is. I did not trim there. And then go ahead and pull your bag through there. And this took me a little bit of time because I did use a glitter vinyl, which tends to stick to itself, but it's so worth the effort. Now once you get that turned through, just reach in through that hole and press out all of those seams nicely. And once you have those seams all pressed out nicely, what you want to do is we are going to fold in the raw edges of that opening by half an inch on each side. Hold it together with clips and then we are going to top stitch that shut with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now I think it would be very easy to add a small zipper pocket to this lining as well if you didn't want to close it this way and then you could do like how I close most of my bags through the lining pocket where you could pull this through that pocket. I think that would work. I'll have to test that next time to see. Okay, I think a zipper pocket would be really nice in here, but it would be a very tiny one, so. Now doing this, I kind of wish that I had switched out to a matching thread because the stitching wouldn't have shown. Of course, I thought about that after the fact, but uh, when it go comes to closing this turning hole, I would definitely recommend uh, choosing a thread that matches your lining. I used black here, so you'd definitely see where my turning hole was, where if I'd used green, you would not have seen it. But it still looks okay. Okay, so then you can go ahead and you can stuff that lining in. Now you can go ahead and try to top stitch along the top of that train case. My zipper was staying out of the way. I'm not going to worry about um, top stitching along the train case uh, zipper. Uh, it is optional in the pattern to do that. I just figure it would be really hard to do, so I'm not going to do it today. It does not need it. So if you were to do that, I would undo it like this and then go ahead and top stitch around, but I'm not going to do it today. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. Now we're going to do our channels for our uh, frame. 
So what you're going to do is right along that zipper, just like you would do any top stitch, you're going to go ahead and you are going to top stitch around there with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then we're going to go back in again and do another one a half inch, a half inch away from that top stitch line. And that will create our channel for our frames. And this would be very easy to top stitch on a flatbed as well. Of course, you'd be doing it the exact same manner I'm doing here. I just prefer my cylinder arm. This is exactly why I bought my cylinder arm, just because it makes top stitching super easy. But it's still pretty easy on my flatbed as well. Okay, and now I'm going back in with a half inch seam allowance. So it's gonna leave a half inch in between our two top stitch marks. So now we are going to do our handles. So I've marked my center line in between my handle pieces. I've also edge coated um, the raw edges of this. Um, if you don't want to have the raw edges, you can make your handles a little bit longer. And if your machine can handle it, you can fold in those raw edges by a quarter of an inch as well to uh, take the raw edge away. So just like we do with any handle, you're going to fold your long edges into that center line and then what we're going to do different is we are actually going to top stitch these with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance down both sides Okay, and then on the back side of these, we're going to measure in two inches and make a mark on the, the wrong sides. And then in between those marks, we're going to fold those folded edges that we had just uh, top stitched into one another wrong sides together, only between those two marks. And then in between those folded marks, we're going to go ahead and top stitch that with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance, making sure we are not catching that 2 inch mark. 
So the two inch marks will remain unsewn at this point. This is creating that faux rolled handle look. So this is what we have right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some, uh, I'm going to make some marks just to help me with my stitching here. We are going to be sewing a box when we attach these to our bag and then an optional X in the middle. I won't be doing the X in the middle as I am going to put rivets in mine, but if you aren't doing rivets, you'll definitely want to sew that X. Now I've already put some double-sided tape on here. Uh, where my marks are from from before when we mark them and I'm going to line the bottom of my handle up with the two bottom dots that we had marked and then go ahead and sew my box around that flat edge of my uh, handle piece and again if you aren't going to put rivets in make sure you go back in and do that X through the center of that box just to give that handle a little extra strength now we are sewing through the lining as well as the exterior of the bag so I got smart at this point and I actually changed my bobbin thread to the lime green like my lining and my top thread is black that way these stitches aren't as noticeable on the lining side at this point i am thinking that this would have been a lot easier to do on my flatbed <laughs> but hey what can you do So you can see that's done my green doesn't show there which is awesome and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a rivet there as well to secure and repeat with the other three connector sides so you can see that is done I put two rivets in each they do show through to the lining but that's okay it still looks really nice and now what we want to do is open up our channel for our uh, frame so on the lining side you're just going to pick the stitches in between that eighth of an inch top stitch and that half inch top stitch you do not want to go past those lines you just want to pick out the stitches for that one area being very careful with it This is where I'm thankful I had a contrasting thread there because I could actually see them as I pulled them up. You can see we've created an opening for both sides and that is where we will be inserting our frame. I'm just kind of sticking a pen in here to kind of open up that so it's easy when I go to stick my frame in just kind of opens it up at that seam a little bit okay so I've done one side because I wanted to practice first so I'm just taking my frame sticking it in there and I was very surprised how easy and how fast this slid in. I was so happy. I was super worried about this point, but it was not hard. Um, the hardest part of putting this frame in is that last half inch or so. You just got to keep on pushing it through until it is in. I found using a tool like a little pliers here to help push it in helped a little bit. And then once it's in, you can go ahead and you can actually hand sew this shut if you wanted to. Um, I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of Gorilla Glue and glue that seam shut. There are no raw edges, they're folded in, so gluing works perfectly fine as well. 
So this is what it looks like. It folds in great. All that's left to do now is install your zipper pulls as I told you how to do that before, matching up those lines on the back of the zipper tape for a straight zipper on each end. So you have your double zippers and then installing your zipper ends. And then we're done. That's it. That's all. So you see the hardest part, part was putting the train case on, but definitely worth it to not have to worry about the binding inside the train case. I've made other bags with train cases with the binding and I swear I struggle with it and I'm one that likes binding. This, this one was really awesome to put together. So I really do hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up. Every thumbs up helps get this video out there. Um, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. And if you'd like to support my channel further, there's two ways you can do that. You can either buy me a coffee down below, which is in the description, or if you would like to take one of my classes, I do have a membership side of YouTube. Uh, which will, uh, we have so long, live so long classes monthly. So every week, we choose one bag for every month and then we do it um, weekly. So I have two classes for that. Anyways, that is down below in the description as well. Until next time, I'll see you then. Bye.